Robin, if you knew Sabo was alive all this time and you knew the connection between Luffy and Sabo, why you no say nothing? So with the chapter opening up, you see Treble and Dan Montero, they're like some bodyguards and shit on some beach. So you see chaos is ensuing on all of Dressrosa. And I guess if I wanted to call this chapter something, I'd probably call it the Dressrosa Massacre or some shit. Because that is what it's approaching after seeing some of the shit in this chapter. So we see that Robin knows Koala and Sabo. Obviously, she was on the Revolutionary Army ship. She was with Dragon. It just really makes me wonder... What, what what does she know? How much does she know? How much does she know about Dragon, about Sabo? I'd imagine if she knows them, Sabo would have said all about, oh my god, you're with, you know, Luffy and everything. I, I'm pretty sure that she knew the connections. Why she never said nothing? I guess that's one of the things that Oda, I would like for him to do a little bit more, is like, there could have been some explanations as things were progressing. Like, for example, when we were coming up from Fishman Island, they could have had a little conversation like, hey, Zoro, why the fuck are you missing an eye? Different questions, I don't know, like, Nami, why are your tits ten times bigger? And then, bam! The action comes in. No Flamingo fucking kicking, trying to get at Kidos and kicks a building off. And I'm like, so how strong is this guy? I'm not sure if that was actually Doflamingo or if that was the puppet because we realize in this chapter that there's a puppet of him. But either way, it's like he was strong enough to cut a building in half. And if I remember correctly, he cut off, I believe it was one of the giants. I can't remember exactly what it was, but he cut off somebody's leg in Marine Ford, if I'm correct as well. So we know that he is fucking sharp as a motherfucker. I don't know if it's the string string fruit that makes him that sharper or, you know, I don't know what it is exactly, but you can clearly see a display that he can even cut buildings when he kicks hard enough. Doflamingo, why are you so strong? And now before anybody says, oh, this proves Doflamingo shits on Loopy. Loopy is nowhere even close to Admiral, let alone, you know, Vice Admiral or anything like that because in this chapter, they go at it, right? And Loopy's going all in, you know, he's trying everything and he takes an arm and hockey punch to the face. But it was Doflamingo and a, you know, puppet of Doflamingo. So it was kind of like two Doflamingos on one Luffy. Can you say that it's fair? I mean, at the end of the day, a battle is a battle. So maybe you could argue that, yeah, what the fuck, you know, that uh, at the end of the day, that's a fight. He lost, clearly got his ass whipped, even though he wasn't down for the count by any means. He just got knocked out of the window and fell down. So I would say that based off the scrimmage that we had right there where they were just going at it and he took an arm and punched to the face, you can't say right now one way or the other whether Luffy had him or Doflamingo had him. It was way too early. Way, way too early. What we saw was pretty interesting. We know that at the very least, um, which I, I believe it might have been displayed before, but at the end of the day, you could, it's safe to assume that Doflamingo had arm in hockey. I mean, it's not the rarest hockey. I mean, if he has the King's hockey, then I'd imagine that he would have arm in hockey. So you see, Luffy takes a punch to the face, and I was just thinking to myself, like, oh man, this would have been the perfect time for them to just go all at. L let's get a fucking Luffy versus Luchi type of fight up in this bitch. That would be fucking amazing. But as of right now, where it stands, uh, in my opinion, you can't say one way or the other right now. First of all, there was a puppet, and Luffy took one punch, and it's just that he fell out the window. If not, he would have kept going. And it's not like he was incapacitated on the floor or anything like that. He blew up into a balloon so that people don't get hurt when they fall down. So you can't say either way right now. And then Birdcage. Lord knew what Birdcage was. And if he knew what it was, he probably should have warned them ahead of time that, hey, he might be able to do this. Just saying, Law. And pretty much Birdcage is he's entrapping the entire island in a fucking cage. Talk about a Birdcage, right? But it also seems like there's more abilities to it because now that his Birdcage is in there, it seems like he can control certain people. I think it has to be a certain amount of power with this, uh, these people. Like, they have to be a certain uh, limit because, like, I don't think he could just have Fuji tour like doing you know the moonwalk or some shit you know so it, it only could be certain people i'm guessing uh you know they have to be like weak or some shit because you see like certain people are just going crazy attacking and the thing that i'm thinking of like yo if you're trying to do birdcage and kill everyone on this island you really think Fujitora is going to let that happen? You really think Vice Admirals are going to let that happen? They're going to go full force and they're going to start attacking you. And while Doflamingo is trying to cover his tracks, he's going to end up getting himself in a shitstorm because, like, unless he hides himself and gets away immediately, like, gets out of the birdcage, you think Fujitora, the Straw Hats, Law, everyone that's there are going to let this go down? But he's smart at the same time because of what he did at the end of that chapter. And I mean, this chapter was 
yet again, even though this entire arc has been displaying it. And if you really think about it, Doflamingo is pretty much like the numero uno villain as of right now, as far as what's going on right now, because he's just fucking dominating and shit. But it's really displaying just how much of a mastermind he is. He's using pretty much Pika to like disrupt shit and like, yo, we're gonna sink the island. It's like he had everything planned for an escape route just in case he had to do some shit like this. Like he's gonna have Pika, you know, start sinking shit and get the factory out. Like one of the things you can see within this chapter that's displayed is his main focus as well is getting the factory up out of there. He's looking at the factory like uh, I need to get that if anything because at the end of the day, if you notice with Doflamingo, the one thing that he does not want to square off with is Kaido. Like, he will even go up, like, you know, he was a little hesitant against Aokiji, but he wasn't completely, completely backing down, but he was like, no, no Kaido. So, that's why he's going after that factory at the end of the day. Like, he's gonna probably try to, you know, lock everyone in there, get the factory stuff, the goods from the factory at the very least, or the way to replicate stuff from the factory, get up out of there, and then he's gonna try to kill everyone once he gets up out of there with the factory. He fucking planned everything, Pika, you know, lock everything with Birdcage, and then he's gonna fucking have that masterful plan that he did at the end where he's basically telling everyone, I'm gonna give you a list of people. You guys know I'm evil. So I don't give a fuck. And it's like, let's keep it real. Like, are these people that stupid to go after this list of people that he's going to give them to kill? That they'll actually do it when they fucking realize how evil he is and what he's been doing this entire time? He's going to kill everyone on this island. He doesn't care. So if the people actually listen to this bullshit that he's saying, they're just going to go right along with his plan. He's not going to, come on, he's not going to keep up to, yeah, don't worry. You know, if you kill these people, you might be safe or something like that. It's just baloney horse shit. Law knows it. Law said it. He's trying to kill everyone to erase what just happened including Fujitora, I'm guessing, which this is not going to go down, though, Flamingo. You think you're stalling? You think you're going to have the people attack this list of people? You're not going to do it. It's not going to matter. I mean, come on. I mean, to be honest with you, if this doesn't get solved on this island or even the island uh, real close by, it's going to feel like on some Naraku Inuyasha shit where Naraku got away. Like, Doflamingo has to get solved on this island because it'll just be ridiculous if he doesn't. It'll really feel like some Inuyasha, oh, he got away type of shit. As a whole with this chapter, I definitely would like a little bit more clarification on Doflamingo's puppet ability because it did come out of nowhere and it's kind of like, so you can make a live recreation of yourself out of this puppet ability? Could it be along the lines of my prediction where it's along the lines of like the life fibers where he's actually one big string and that's why like he couldn't recreate himself right there? Because from what I'm seeing, it kind of reminds me a little bit of, I remember in Yu Yu Hakusho, the, I believe it was Elder Tagoro when he could clone himself and like, not clone himself, but he could basically like use like the strands of his finger to make an entire version of himself. And he would use that to basically replicate himself. So maybe it could just be like one little thing of string and he could use it to stretch out and recreate a clone of himself. So I definitely want more clarification because as of right now, it just kind of came out of nowhere and it's just like, so the clone or the puppet is what got beheaded and not actually throw Flamingo, but then he was talking there. A little bit too complicated there. I would like a little more of an explanation, and we will get it next week's chapter, but definitely a, had me a little bit lost for words, so to speak. And just a lot of progression, like Birdcage is in there. Fujitora knows at this point that Doflamingo Flamingo is a full-on enemy. Like, he's locking him in there for death. He knows that he has to try to do something. People are getting attacked left and right because he's controlling them. He's going to know that he's going to have to. So right now, I feel he made a very big gamble. He's gambling on the people attacking and everybody being, in, in, you know, disoriented so he could get the goods and get up out of there and, you know, lock them in there and kill them with Birdcage. But making an enemy out of Fujitora and everybody on there, all it's going to take is for them to round up and say, yo, fuck you, you ain't going nowhere, destroy the factory or get him and, and it's done. So he's gambling right now with making an enemy out of Fujitora and the Vice Admirals. And overall, just a lot of great progression. And it was just like, Birdcage, let's go. It's really setting up. You can see that this arc is very close to ending, and it's just like, uh, how is this all going to go down? Doflamingo versus Sabo, the revolutionaries that are on the island, the Straw Hats, the fucking admirals, vice admirals. It's like too much for my body to handle. As a whole, I'm going to give this one 8.5 out of 10. Very good chapter. Um, again, it just felt a little bit confusing with the whole Doflamingo ability because it was really like unclear as of right now with the puppet stuff. And ultimately, like I would like to see more people spring into action. Like, he's right there and people are just kind of like getting like tossed out the window and shit. Let's get Doflamingo down. Fujitora, let's go. Let me know what you think. First of all, can you explain a little bit from what you gather what is Doflamingo's ability thus far? Is it actually just like one replicated string from him or is it a complete clone puppet? 
up it? And do you agree with me that pretty much as of right now, you can't really gather either or side who would have won Luffy and Dolph Mingo based on that little fight that they had? And your overall thoughts of the chapter. But that's all I have for this review. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Thumbs up for Birdcage and thumbs up for the setup for what's going to be chaos because nobody's going to take this line down and Dolph Mingo just made too many enemies. Uh, for Neverworld, and as always, people, have an awesome day.